I'd like all of us to thank God for the opportunity that we have now. The opportunity of this spiritual week. That we are going to be different in the end spiritually and it has to start even immediately. For some people it has already started. But let's assume that you are one of them for whom it has not yet started the way it should be. I'd like you to be rest assured that this week will not pass you by. And the Lord is going to bring a different thing to your life. This evening, we are going to look at a topic, and it is called Enabled to Prevail. Enabled to Prevail. You see, one of the issues about being spiritual is being given the ability to function beyond the human level, given the ability to do things that human beings should ordinarily find impossible, or at the best, very difficult. But today, first of all, we are going to read a scripture that we read yesterday, and we are going to read John chapter 4. First of all, I'll read verse 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into eternal life. And we have to try to understand what Jesus was saying. He said, well, there is water that I am going to give. That is to say, I am going to bring an enablement into you that is different from what you are able to do by yourself. You are functioning from the natural elements of life. You are functioning from the natural perspectives to life. You are functioning from self, from the carnal person. But I am going to bring the spiritual side to you. And by that spiritual side, something is going to fundamentally change in you. A foundational change is coming into your life because of what I am going to do for you. Now, let's remember that Jesus just spoke to the woman. Didn't give him any water didn't lay hands on her, the words themselves carried the life of the Spirit of God into that woman. And he said, this thing is going to transform you into an eternal person, everlasting life. The everlasting life does not start when you get to heaven, it starts from here. That is to say, I am going to make you a completely spiritual being. From now on, you are going to have a spiritual experience that separates you from what your past was. And that is the word for us today. That is the word for somebody today. You are going to receive such power that will translate you, transform you from the carnal person to the spiritual person, from who you were to another person. Now we are going to look at verses 17 and 18 of where we are reading, and we are going to find something very interesting. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that, you spoke truly. Praise the Lord. Now, what is Jesus saying to the woman? You have found yourself in a terrible situation of life. First facts, there is no woman who would prefer to marry five husbands and look for a sixth one to marry. And we have an abbreviation. We don't know if she had other men, which is almost like the thing that happened long before she had the five husbands. We don't even know if in between the five husbands there were other men. There is no woman who would rightfully want to marry five husbands in life. Yes, we have... Those things about uh, celebrities, they talk about how they married many husbands and all of that. You find that the most prominent of them even went back to marry the first one. Why? Because in every marriage there is this hope that this thing will last a lifetime. There is this expectation that this, there's going to be no disappointment. But there are many areas of disappointment. It could end in the death of one spouse or the other. It could end in some divorce or one thing or the other leads to a separation. But then, the basic 
objective is not to get married to many men in a single lifetime. So situations of life are compelled upon people. And upon this one was compelled a situation that she had no control over. What is it in your life that you have no control over? What are the things that are happening to you that should not happen to you? And you look at it and you don't like it. But you keep seeing yourself in that situation. This is a woman who would have desired to be married. But she keeps seeing herself in a failed marriage. She tries another one, it fails again. She tries, it fails. And number six here, she's also trying to see if it will turn into a marriage. That was a dissatisfied human being. Are you also dissatisfied in life? There are things that are happening with you that removes joy from you. Things are happening in your life that there is no peace. What you hope for is not there. Sometimes you make do with what you have, not what you would have liked to have. Sometimes you try to be satisfied with whatever it is. She was living with a sick person, not her husband. And when he says you had married five, it means that all five went out to marry her. Can you imagine the stigma that she had in the society? Wherever anybody's marriage is failing a second time, you say you want to look like her, you want to be like her. Sometimes we get to that situation. We are compelled into what we cannot change. But when the power of the Spirit of God comes into you, it changes that. That's what Jesus was telling her. He said, listen, woman, your life is going to change. The past is being wiped away by the Spirit of God. I'd like you to understand, child of God, that because the Spirit of God has come to you, and because this knowledge has come to you today, your past is wiped out. That thing that became the definition of your life is no longer the definition of your life. What makes you think the woman was excited to run back and tell everybody, come and see a man who told me everything? It's not because he talked about the marriage, but because she felt in her that something drastic had changed, that her life had become a different life, that she could now walk around like any other woman with any other woman. You know, at the point, some people will keep clear of our company. You know, there are things that happen to you and some people are dodging you. That thing has come to an end today. Because God is going to create in you a different spirit, a different being by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is nothing that the power of the Holy Spirit cannot change in life. Change the story of that woman is changing your story even now. I want to read the psalm that we all know. And that is Psalm 51. I'll read verse 7 and I'll read verse 10 to 12. Perch me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O God. I have a heart that cannot stand. I am always failing. I can't even follow you properly. But by your spirit, your generous spirit, create in me a clean heart. Wash me clean. Make a different person out of me. Purify me. You know how best to purify me? Purify me, Lord. Not that I want to resist your purification. Sometimes purification is tough. But Lord, do it in your mercy. And he says, uphold me by your generous spirit. Let your mercy attend my purification, but create in me a new heart. Make me a different person and present me different. You know that woman, she became presented different to all the men in the place. Now listen to me. A woman who had that kind of reputation walks up to men and says, come and listen to somebody. They will follow her. No. Because by the work of the Spirit of God in her, her presentation to people had changed. Immediately. She didn't take a week before she went to tell the people immediately and everybody followed her. Strange. But what am I telling you? This power that has touched you has changed the perception of people towards you. Whoever sees you again after now will see a different person. You will not be rated according to your past. You will be rated according to the spirit of God. Creating me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. A steadfast spirit within me. Uphold me with your right, just right hand. In this new situation, I cannot take care of myself. I cannot uphold myself. But you, 
are able to uphold me. Uphold me with that righteous right hand of yours. Let your generous spirit take control of me. I'm going to read another psalm again. And I'm reading Psalm 19 verses 12 and 13. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. There is nothing as bad as going forward and then going back to, you know, the scripture talks about the dog who goes back to his vomit. I don't want to be that kind of person, Lord. Help me. I cannot stand except you make me stand. I like the scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am on a path with the Holy Spirit. I have been renewed. I am being renewed also. And this renewal has to be continuous. I have been transformed from the carnal me into an eternal person. Walking in the spirit of God. But I want to stand. I don't want to fall. As the scripture says, let him that says he stands, take heed that he stands. What heed am I going to take? How am I going to be able to make myself to stand? Lord, keep me standing. I can stand. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Christ strengthen me. Let the Spirit of God also strengthen me. I don't want to depend on my own. I don't want to say I've received the Spirit of God so I can strengthen myself. I can do things. No, I can do all things only through Christ. I want to be dependent on you. Father, cleanse me from my presumptuous sins. These things that I don't know to be sins. The things that are assumed to be correct, but they are wrong. Father, cleanse me. I want to have a good st- standing with you. My secret sins, those ones that don't even appear to me to be sins. And the things that I hide away so much that I even think that I've hidden them away from you or even from myself. Father, take me away from them. May your mercy come upon me. I'm going to pray for everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, these are your children. You know the hearts of all. As many as are yielded towards you, thank you. May this power come upon them. The cleansing power that removes their past. The invigorating power that infuses power into them to be able to stand firm in you. Thank you, Lord, for wiping away the past in one stroke. Thank you for wiping away the wrong perception that people had of them. They will see them now and see different people. Those who never would listen to them will obey them. And may your word of peace come out of their mouths continually. Let them be able to live this new life. The clean heart must not only be felt inside, it must come outside. Their lives will be different. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like you to pray for yourself. And what is that prayer now? Lord, where I have started. As it were, we have started. Me, you, the Holy Spirit, we have started. But on this journey of mine, uphold me. It will not end today. It will not end this week. Help me to grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Stand me firm. I want to be stood secured in you. Thank you, Lord, for doing it. Pray that kind of prayer. And then I want to pray for you. Final prayer. Lord, open eyes to see. May revelation come upon everyone this night. And continuing from here. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. For tomorrow's prayer, make sure you have a little bit of olive oil. There is something we'll do tomorrow evening. Make sure you have a little bit of olive oil, no matter how small, but make sure you have olive oil. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.